Notice this. This is a historical accident. We know of that iconic shape of Palestine because of all the beautiful artwork that Palestinians have done with that. And Palestinians and so many who love the Palestinian resistance have done with this iconic map. These borders are new. Again, they were cut by the British and the French in 1923. They're new. The people, every single person, every family, every community who lived there, who was not Jewish, which was the majority, has been marked for extermination to create the state of Israel. And those are who we're talking about when we mean Palestinians, the people who have such long, beautiful history with this land that's been called a bunch of names for, as, for, for, for millennia and Palestine a long time ago. These are who we're talking about. These are the people in resistance who, who this territory, Palestine, has been stolen. And it gets its shape earlier in the 19th century, in decades before. This is a map of, see how it says Western Palestine? And see how like it's getting that iconic shape? This is what influenced the previous map here of the Sykes-Picot Agreement. See that? That, that, that shape of red Palestine is similar to this map of Western Palestine. This map of Western Palestine was the first map I could find uh, where Palestine gets that iconic shape in its modern borders. And it was created by evangelicals, by Christians. It was not created by Jews. It was created by Christians from Britain and the United States, mostly from Britain. There was evangelicals from the United States and from London who really believe that Palestine is theirs, that God gave them Palestine, like how they believe with manifest destiny that God gave them all of these lands. They believe that same thing. And so they're mapping Palestine as their own. They couldn't map it though. They're you know scholars that know ancient Hebrew and could understand the Arabic a little. They could hear echoes in the contemporary Arabic there were echoes of Hebrew in it. And so they would create these place names like, you know, holy land place names. And the, the, the scholars called upon the help to map of the empire, of the British cartographers, of the engineers, because they couldn't do it themselves. And so while the Ottoman Empire still held on to these territories, the British engineers, the military, together with the religious scholars, would map Palestine. And that happened in the second half of the 19th century. So like 1860s, 70s, and 80s. By the 80s, we have this. And this map has roads. It's got wells, water sources. And it, and it became a very important military map for the British when they were fighting the Ottomans a few decades later. And so... This map is called Western Palestine because for them, for Zionists, they understand that the Holy Land is, goes far, uh, um, it goes farther out to the, the, the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers in Iraq, present day Iraq. So Western Palestine. Eastern Palestine, this is the river. This is the river Jordan. And here's the sea, so from the river to the sea. Shout out to 805, shout out to everyone who's, who's watching. Uh, we'll record this as well and put it up on our whatever, <laughs> on our IG. But notice that this is Western Palestine. The British did Western Palestine and the US Americans wanted to do the other part of Palestine. Um, or they wanted to also map, so, but the British are like, you know, y'all aren't really good map mappers. You, you can't really do that good of a job. So why don't we give you the part that's least important? And that's the Eastern part. And we'll take the part that has the holy sites and everything. And that's actually what happened. The U.S. Americans messed up. They did not map the Eastern part of Palestine. And because of that mess up, this is the only part of Palestine that was created when it was mapped in a few decades later in 1923. And so this iconic shape.